जय जगन्नाथ जय जगन्नाथ स्वामी जय जगन्नाथ जय बालदेवा जय सुभद्रा जय बालदेवा जय सुभद्रा जय सुभद्रा जय बालदेवा जय सुभद्रा
Jasomati Nandana Brajabharana Kara Kokula Ranjana Kahana Jasomati Nandana Brajabharana Kara Kukula Ranjana Kana Kopi Parana Dhanna Ma Dhanna Manohara Kalyadamana <laughs> Amala Hari Nam, Amya Vilasa. Amala Hari Nam, Amya Vilasa. Vipina Puranja, Anna Vina Nagarabara. Vitina Puranja Rana Vina Nagarabara Vamsi Vadana Suvasa Vamsi Vadana Suvasa Raja Jana Pala Sura Kula Nachana Raja Jana Pala Sura Kula Nachana Nanda Kunana Rako Hala Nanda 
नंदा को जान रखो आहा गोविंद माधवा नवन गोविंद माधवा नवन कथा सुंदर नंद गोपा सुंदर नंद गोपा यमुना चक्ष चर गोपी वासन हारा यामुन तत्चर गोपी वासन हारा राजा रसिका कृपा महाया राजा रसिका कृपा महाया श्री राधा बल्लभ वृंदवान नटबारा श्री राधा बल्लभ वृंदवान नटबारा भगत दिन भगत दिन अमल हरि नाम अभिलाष दशराया जय हराधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय हराधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जान बल्ला गोपी कान बल्ला गिरी पर यशोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरा चाहिए 
Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachadesha Tarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om 
namo bhagavate vasudevaya More and more people are coming in. It might be a good idea you, the ladies all move forward a bit and then people can get... There's a lot of space in the front here. Just everyone... So we're reading Bhagavad Gita, the verses on the board, chapter 1, text number 6. <coughs> Who's translating for us? Either one to one. Oh, okay. I shall, I shall like. You want to sit behind and do it? Yeah. Okay. Yagla on the English, Kalagari, Kabul, 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 Yudamanyasya Vikranda Yudamanyasya Vikranda Yudamanyasya Vikranda Yudamanyasya Vikranda Uttamo Jascha Viryavan Uttamo Jascha Viryavan Uttamo Jascha Viryavan Uttamo Sobhadro Drupadeyascha Sobhadro Drupadeyascha Sobhadro Drupadeyascha Sobhadro Drupadeyascha Sarva Eva Maharata Sarva Eva Maharata Sarva Eva Yudamanyasya Viryanva Yudamanyasya Vikranta Uttamanyasya Vikranta Adrodrupadeyascha Adrodrupadeyascha Sarva Eva Maharata Sarva Eva Maharata Yudhamo Jascha Vikranda Yudhamo Jascha Vikranda Uttamo Jascha Viryavan Uttamo Jascha Viryavan Subhadro Drupadeyascha Subhadro Drupadeyascha Sarva Eva Maharata Sarva Eva Maharata Chant
Yudamanyu Cha and Vikranta Mighty Utamoja Utamoja Cha and Viryavan Very powerful Subhadra the son of Subhadra, Drupadeya, the sons of Drupadi, Cha, and Sarve, all, Eva, certainly, Maharata, great chariot fighters. Translation. There are the mighty Yudamanyu, the very powerful Uttamoja, the son of Subhadra and the sons of Draupadi. All these warriors are great chariot fighters. You can repeat. There are the mighty Yudam Yudamanyu, the very powerful Uttamoja, the son of Subhadra and the sons of Draupadi. All these warriors are great chariot fighters. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Chalakaya Taksurun Militanina Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Tadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam 
Vande Aham Shri Gara Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Stya Shri Rupam Sahrajatam Sahajana Raganatan Bitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Nikamstya He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaste Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavishwari Vrishabhanu Sutei Pranamami Hari Pir Vansha Taupata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Vaivasa Padita Nam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Jadana Shri Vasati Kodvata Vinaya Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're hearing the words of Drona Duryodhan. Duryodhan is speaking to his teacher, Dronacharya. This is, of course, before the battle took place. So Duryodhan wants to make sure Dronacharya is aware of all the different personalities who are there on the battlefield. And he's telling him about some of the people who are there, who are, because they have to know about who are the enemy, who are you fighting against. You have to know their strength and also their weaknesses. So Duryodhan was very, he, he's actually, in the beginning of the battle, he doesn't fight. He's just like the commander, the manager, he's telling Bhisma, you go and fight. And he's telling uh, Drona to go and fight. Karna said he wouldn't go and fight until Bhisma is killed. Because he said, if I go and fight, Bhisma gets all the credit. So that was the mood, you know, not very... <laughs> Not very nice kind of mood. That we want to get the credit. Karna was thinking, why should I fight if he's getting all the credit? So he said, when Bhishma falls, then I will go into battle. So Karna wasn't fighting. And Duryodhan, he's like the, the coach or the manager, and he's making the arrangements, telling people, you go there, you do this, you do that, use that weapon different things. Just like when you watch these ball games, you know, football and uh, basketball and so they have their managers and their coaches and they're telling the players what to do. They're giving them instructions and they're warning them. You have to watch out for this one and you have to watch out that person. So Duryodhan is like that. He's telling Drona, Dronacharya is going to be fighting in the beginning. He's going to fight. But Drona has to be careful because fighting against him is the person who was born to kill him. Right? The person who was born to kill him. What was his name? Who was born to kill Drona? Dristadyumna. 
the brother of Draupadi, right? The two were born together by Draupada. He wanted to get revenge against Drona. And so Drishta Jumna was born to kill. But Drishta Jumna had been the student of Drona. Drona was a Brahmana. And Brahmanas are very charitable, supposed to be. Brahmanas are meant, somebody will ask them for something, they will give. Yes, what, what can I give you? What can I give you? Brahmanas have that nature. They're very kind. They will not refuse someone. If they have something and someone comes and asks for it, they will give it. There's an example in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Indra wanted to fight a big demon. There was a big demon called Vritasura. Vrita, very big, powerful demon. And he was fighting the demigods. So Indra didn't know how, how he could defeat this demon. And he went to the Supreme Lord Vishnu and he prayed to Lord Vishnu. And Lord Vishnu told Indra, he said, I'm not going to kill him for you. You want to kill him, you kill him yourself. Because Vrita was a Brahmin, born from a Brahmana. Although he was a demon, an Asura, he was born from a Brahmana. And the Lord knew about Vrita. He didn't want to kill him. And he told Indra, you want him to be killed? You have to kill him yourself. But Lord Vishnu was kind to Indra and he told him, he said, you want to kill him, you have to, you have to get a special weapon. And you can kill him with that weapon. And the weapon was the thunderbolt weapon made from the bones of a great yogi named Dadichi, Dadichi Muni. If you go to Naimesharanya, you can see the, the replica of the ashram of Dadichi Muni. Dadichi, thousands of years ago, he used to live in Naimesharanya. So Dadichi was a very elevated yogi. Lord Vishnu told Indra, you go to Dadichi and ask him to give the bones from his body. And then from the bones of his body you can make Bhadrajra weapon to kill the demon. Would you like to give the bones from your body? No? Are you attached to your bones? You'll have to give them up one day. We all leave our bones behind, right? We're not the bones. We're not the body, so we're not the bones. So Lord Indra came to see Dadichi and he asked him, he said, could you give me the bones from your body? And so Dadichi said, oh, don't you know the body is the thing we are most attached to? Isn't it true? We're most attached to the body. We spend all of our time and money on the body. You can see when you go shopping, it's all shops for the body. There's even a body shop. <laughs> so we are always worried and taking care for the body. We will spend a lot of money on the body, little things go wrong with the body, we'll spend a fortune to get it right. But the body is finished with the time of death. We have to give up the body 
right? What does Krishna say about the body in the Bhagavad Gita? He said the body is just like the dress. Right? What's the verse? Tejasini. You know the verse? Hari Priya. You know the verse? You're a Bhakti Shastri student. Huh? No, no. Vachamsi Vacham. You know it? Vachamsi Jarnani Yata Vihaya Navani Krenati Naroparani Tata Shariani Vihaya Jirnani Anyani Samyati Navani Dehi. Krishna is saying this body is just like a dress. And just like you give up the old dress to get a new dress, we give up the old body to get a new body. <laughs> so, the Gichi said, we're very attached to this body. But Lord Indra said, well, he said, you know, asking for charity it's not very easy. It's difficult to ask people for charity. I know it's difficult to give charity, but it's also difficult to ask for charity. Hmm? You can ask Ram Tosi Prabhu. Ram Tosi does a lot of, he did a lot of work raising funds to help to purchase this place, right? So he was asking a, a lot of people to give donations, to get funds so we could purchase this place. He made a lot of efforts. Of course other devotees also helped, I'm sure. But uh, the point is, it's not easy to ask people for charity and it, it's not easy to give charity. Hmm. So Daddy, she said, oh, very good. And he said, all right, I will give you the bones from my body. So Daddy, she knew yoga, and by yoga, meditation, he gave up his body. And Indra then took the bones and made the weapon, and he could kill the Indra. That was a, a special charity, unusual to get that kind of charity. So, Dronacharya was a brahmana and he had taught uh, Ab Abhimanu, the Dr Drishta Jumna, he taught Drishta Jumna how to, the, the, the element of fighting, how to fight and everything. Dronacharya was the guru of the Kuru dynasty, he taught all the Kurus. Kurus included the Pandavas, the Pandavas as well as the sons of Pandu as well as the sons of Dhritarashtra. They were all Kurus. In the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita you can hear Dhritarashtra's words that Dhritarashtra separated his sons from the sons of Pandu. Right? Dharma Kshetri Kurup Kshetri Mam Aka Pandavas Chaiva. So Dhritarashtra is saying, What did my sons and the sons of Pandu do? Now they're both Kurus, they're both, both the, the groups of sons, the sons of Dhritarashtra, he had a hundred sons, and the Pandavas, five. They were all Kurus, but Dhritarashtra is making a distinction. He's thinking, my sons. He's supposed to be the, the stepfather of the Pandavas because the Pandavas had lost their father. Maharaj Pandu but he died untimely while the Pandavas were still very young. And Dhritarashtra was meant to take care of them. But he had this grudge against the Pandavas. He had a grudge. What was the problem? Because he didn't get to be the king. Because he was blind. And he thought, 
blind king is not very good. King should be able to see. So they said, you can't be the, this child cannot be the king. So then they had Pandu. So Pandu was the, the second son. So he became the king. But he died very early. And when he died, then Pandavas were still very young. So Dhritarashtra had to become the king. But he wanted that his sons should be the king. He did not want that the Pandavas should rule. So there was this problem in the family. You know, we get these problems, even brothers, they're not able to get along with each other. They fight with each other, they will quarrel about the money. You know, if the father is a rich man, just like there was that reliance, <laughs> right? Famous company in India, Re reliance. So the man died, the man who built up the company died and he left his sons. And when the sons had to run the company, they quarreled with each other. And the brother, I want my share, I want to do separate, yeah, I don't want to work with you, and they separated. Like that. So difficult for brothers to get along sometimes. Lord Ramachandra, that was special. They could. Bharat was very loyal and Shatrupna, Lakshman, they were all ideal brothers. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So, here we have Duryodhana instructing Dronacharya, telling him we've got a lot of powerful people on the other side. The son of Subhadra, who is that? Who is the son of Subhadra? Abhimanu. Abhimanu, right, very famous, Abhimanu, the son of Subhadra. And who is the father? Arjuna, right, Arjuna. So Abhimanu is there, he's a great warrior. So Arjuna, he had, he had the uh, Subhadra for his wife. He already had wives, <laughs> but when he was attracted to Subhadra. How Arjuna disguised himself. He, he grew a beard and he, he put on. And he was renounced and he was there at Dwarka. And at one point, Lord Balaram had arranged to put him to the palace to give him food. They thought, we will feed the sadhu. And so at that time, Arjuna took the opportunity to take Subhadra away. It was a problem because Lord Balaram, he was thinking he would get Subhadra married to Duryodhan, <laughs> because Duryodhan is a friend of Balaram. But anyway, Arjuna liked Subhadra and Subhadra liked him. So it was found out that Subhadra actually liked Arjuna, then Lord Balaram accepted. Initially, Lord Balaram was very angry. He was very angry at Arjuna. But Lord Krishna pleaded with him and fell at the feet of Balaram and begged him that Balaram, no, this is actually good, that Subhadra wanted to be married to Arjuna. So when Lord Balaram heard that, then he said, all right. So Subhadra was married to Arjuna. And uh, Abhimanu was his son. Uh, Abhimanu, he died in the battle, he was killed in the battle, unfairly. He was surrounded by many great Maharatis and they killed him. What happened was they had made a, a wheel formation 
and Abhimanu knew how to get into the wheel, but he didn't know how to get out. So he got into the wheel and he was fighting, but he didn't know how to get out. And at that point he got surrounded by all the great Maharatis in the Kurava army and they killed him. So of course it was a tragedy for the Pandavas because Abhimanu was loved by all of the Pandavas. It was a great loss. But actually it's described that Abhimanu, he was actually a demigod. He was the son of the sun god. And the sun god was very attached to his son. They wanted Abhimanu to go and take part in the pastimes of Lord Krishna. But the sun god said, well, I, I will, it will be unbearable for me to lose my son, for my son to be away. They said, no, it's okay, he will come back quickly. So that was why he died in the battle of Kurukshetra. So he could go back to his place in heaven as the son of the sun god. So Abhimanu was the son of Subhadra and then there were sons of Draupadi. Draupadi was married to the five Pandavas. Hmm? Panchali, five husbands. Hmm? Any of you ladies have five husbands? <laughs> Don't think so, huh? <laughs> Five husbands. So Arjuna had actually won Draupadi in the archery contest. They were disguised at the time. Arjuna was disguised, but he had come and he had won the contest. He had pierced the eye of a fish, which was covered by a rotating wheel so it was a very difficult feat which he performed, but Arjuna succeeded and he was given Draupadi in marriage. And when he came back with Draupadi, he announced to his mother, Mother, I have won a prize. And Queen Kunti was inside and she did not know, know anything, she did not know what was happening. And she simply replied to Arjuna that whatever you want, you must share it with your brothers. So when Arjuna heard that, it was a shock that, oh, you know, she does not know that I've won, I've won this woman, this beautiful young woman, Draupadi. Draupadi was no ordinary lady. She had come from the heavenly planet. And just the aroma of her body would mesmerize the minds of some of the greatest men. They would just become overwhelmed with lust. Just the, the, the aroma coming from her body was so powerful. And there were men who, you know, really tried to, they wanted Draupadi, but they met they got a fierce beating for trying to molest Draupadi. So actually, of course, Draupadi plays a key role in the Kurukshetra war. This whole Kurukshetra war is actually brought about because of her. Because they had ill-treated Draupadi. They had uh, taken her unfairly in a gambling match, in a game of dice, Maharaj Yudhisthira was forced into wagering everything. And Draupadi at one point was the wager and they lost her. So then they tried to disrobe her and they untied her hair. So because she was abused at that time, Draupadi made a vow that she would not tie her hair up again until she washed it in the blood of the person who had untied her hair. And it happened that Bhishma, a uh, Bhima rather, Bhima killed Dushasan and ripped out his heart and took the blood and washed the hair of Draupadi. 
So Bhima took vows before the battle that he would get the revenge, that he would kill all of the sons of Dhritarashtra. And he did. Sometimes Arjuna could have killed them, but he, he would leave them for Bhim to kill because he wanted Bhim to uh, complete his vow. So Bhim made a vow, he would kill all the sons of Dhritarashtra and he would bring the heart with the blood for Draupadi to wash her hair. And then the, the third thing was he would break the thigh of Duryodhana. Because at one point Duryodhana had told Draupadi, you should come and sit here on my lap. And when Bhim heard that, he said, I will break that thigh. And it happened that that was the culmination of the battle, that he broke the thigh of Duryodhana. So the sons of Draupadi, they were young men, and, but they're described here, they're Maharatis. They were great fighters. Of course, they were also killed. They were also killed because it happened that Ashwatthama came and he came while they were sleeping and he killed them all. Ashwatthama was the son of Dronacharya. Ashwatthama is an Amara actually, he's one of the more, but he did this heinous, he did this very sinful activity. He came while the sons of Draupadi were sleeping and he killed them without giving them a chance to themselves. So that is against all the Kshatriya codes. Nobody, no Kshatriya should fight in such a manner. And because of this, of course, Arjuna arrested Ashwatthama and he punished Ashwatthama. He punished him by cutting off his, the jewel from his head and sending him away in disgrace. And sending him to wander in the wastelands of the Himalayas. Nobody will come near him for centuries. So that was the result of his killing the sons of Draupadi. He got punished for that. So all of these warriors are great Maharatis. They've all come together to take part in this battle of Kurukshetra. This Kurukshetra war is the arrangement of Lord Krishna. It's the arrangement of Lord Krishna to remove the burden on Mother Earth. Mother Earth was burdened by the Kshatriya kings. There were too many Kshatriya kings and they were not So Mother Earth was in a very, uh, a very d unhappy condition and she went to approach Lord Brahma and asked Lord Brahma to help. At that time, Lord Brahma brought all the demigods including Lord Shiva and they all went to the shore of the milk ocean and there Lord Brahma meditated on Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu resides on Sweta Dweep. Sweta Dweep is the island in the milk ocean. And he explained the situation how the earth was overburdened by so many demoniac kings. So then the message came from Lord Vishnu that the Lord said, I am going to come and you should also go and take birth. And the Lord said, I will appear in the Yadu dynasty and you can also come. All of 
the demigods, you can also come. And so it happened that many great demigods, they left their heavenly abode. You have, for example, Yamaraj comes. Of course, Yamaraj was a special king. He was cursed. He was cursed by uh, uh, he was cursed by one Muni because the Muni considered that Yamaraj had been unfair to him. And so Yamaraj was cursed to become a Sutra. And he came as Vidura. And Vidura is there and then other great demigods are also there. They've all come to take part. Not only the demigods come, people have also come from the spiritual world. There are great sages in the past time, in, before Lord Krishna, in his previous incarnation, he was Lord Rama. And as Lord Ramachandra, he had been in the forest of Dandakaranya. And there, great sages had seen him. And they had desired to have a, a relationship with Lord Ramachandra. They, de they desired to have a relationship with Lord Ramachandra. But Lord Ramachandra had made a vow, Ekapatni Vrat. He thought, I cannot satisfy your desire in this incarnation, but you come in my next incarnation. You take your birth in my next incarnation in the families of the Kauhar people in Vrindavan. In other words, you should become gopis in Braja. And in that way, I will be able to satisfy your desires. And it happened that the sages, these great sages from the Dandakaranya far, when the Lord came as Lord, when Lord Rama came as Lord Krishna, at that, that time these sages came as gopis in the family of the people of Vrindavan. And Lord Krishna was able to enjoy pastimes with them and satisfy their desires. So there were many great personalities. There was also the personified Vedas, the Shrutichavas. Shrutichavas, they desired to understand the Lord as a person. So they also came, they also appeared in Braja, and they also took birth in the family of the cowherd people so they could be part of Lord Krishna's pastimes. So there were many great personalities all there involved. And so many Kshatriya kings, they're all coming to battle. It is said hun hundreds of millions of people died in the Kurukshetra war. And it only lasted 18 days. In 18 days, the Pandavas conquered the world and they became rulers of the world. Srila Prabhupada used to tell the devotees, he said, you should also do like the Pandavas, conquer the world in 18 days and rule the world, spread Krishna consciousness. Eighteen days you can rule the whole world. And if you rule the world, then you can make everyone be Krishna conscious. Right? We want to end the Kali Yuga. How to end the Kali Yuga? By Krishna consciousness. By spreading the chanting of the holy names. So Lord Krishna came 5,000 years ago. He arranged this battle of Kurukshetra to remove the burden on the world. The world was overburdened. Lord Krishna comes. He did not actually come just to kill people. And his real purpose in coming is to give pleasure
to his devotees. And Lord Krishna is there. Although he had promised not to fight in the battle of Kurukshetra, he wants Arjuna to get the credit. He likes to give the credit to his devotees. And whenever there was any danger in Arju for Arjuna, then Lord Krishna would be there to help him. Just like at one point Grandfather Bhishma came running towards Krishna with a wheel in his hand. He was going to kill Arjuna. He was carrying the chariot wheel and said, Oh no, Bhima was not carrying, it was Krishna picked up the chariot wheel and Krishna picked up the wheel and ran towards Bhishma because Bhishma was coming to kill Arjuna. Arjuna's chariot had become stuck and he was in difficulty. And Grandfather Bhishma had vowed that today I'm going to kill Arjuna or Krishna will have to break his promise. Krishna had promised he would not fight. But Krishna also promised that his devotee would never perish. So Krishna thought, better I save my devotee. My own promise is not very important. He didn't care so much about his own promise, but he cared about his devotee. He wanted to protect his devotee. So he broke his promise to protect his devotee. And so this is something which happened during Kurukshetra war. Lord Krishna is I, I, I brought all of these people together. They all came, so many different Kshatriyas from all different parts of the world. They all came to assemble to fight in this great battle. Kurukshetra, today it's just a small place if you go to Kurukshetra. It's not a very big place. There's a train station there, Kurukshetra. And there's a big lake there, but in the past it was hundreds of miles wide. The Kurukshetra fields, the plains of Kurukshetra were very wide, big. And hundreds and thousands and millions of soldiers all came there and took part in the battle. And this way Lord Krishna relieved the earth of the burden so that they could establish Dharma. Lord Krishna wanted the Pandavas to rule the world. And Lord Krishna arranged for it like that, in that way. And all the people who died on the battlefield, they all got liberated. They got a new body, a much better body than the body they had. They got the spiritual body. That is the kindness of Lord Krishna. So whatever Krishna does is, is always good. Even though he is killing the demons, he is giving them liberation. He is giving them the better body. So Lord Krishna is so kind, so merciful. We also have to take shelter of Lord Krishna. We have to approach him and take the shelter of his lotus feet. How to take shelter of his lotus feet? By chanting his holy name. And by hearing and chanting the glories of Krishna, by reading Bhagavad Gita and chanting the names of Krishna. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, how many of you are chanting? Oh, very few. <laughs> okay, better. Most of you are chanting, eh? Good. So, do you like the new temple? Yes. So, are you going to come and do more service? Yeah. <laughs> Ready to come every day, right? Come all the time.
and do service, make garlands for the deities, cook for the deities, and chant for the deities. Okay? Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki